If you're in the market for a luxury two-row SUV, you are very spoiled for choice. There's BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, Lexus, Genesis, Acura. You have so many options out there. So where does this Lincoln Nautilus stand amongst its competitors? Let's go for a drive and find out. Just like many other luxury brands, specifically the German cars, this Lincoln Nautilus is available with two engines. The base engine is a turbocharged 2.0-liter 4-cylinder and it produces 250 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. But this particular demo vehicle has the optional 2.7-liter twin-turbocharged V6 and it produces 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. Although this Lincoln Nautilus weighs just over two tons with this v6 engine it doesn't feel like as though it's struggling to pull this much mass you just gently roll on the throttle transmission down shifts a couple of gears and the speed really picks up however the sweet spot for this engine is more in the mid rpm range because the peak torque figure isn't reached until about the 3000 mark but even below that when you're just poodling around town and you don't really need the speed and power this engine, again, it doesn't feel like as though it's struggling to pull the weight of this Nautilus. As for the transmission, it is an 8-speed automatic and the shifts are nice and smooth, which is what you expect from a Lincoln vehicle. But don't expect this to be a fast and responsive transmission if you decide to take over control with the paddle shifters that are mounted on the steering wheel. There's quite a bit of a delay, especially on the upshift. On downshifts, it is a little bit faster, but on the upshifts, it's almost a one second delay from the time that you pull the paddle to the time that the uh, transmission actually shifts. So like many other luxury SUVs, best to just leave the transmission in D or S and let the computer decide the shifting. One good thing about having this 8-speed automatic is the fact that the RPMs are kept really low at highway speeds and actually even when you're just cruising around town. I'm actually averaging about 11.7 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's not too bad considering the weight of this Nautilus and the fact that it's a twin turbocharged V6 engine. Dynamically, this is not a sporty driving SUV. It has a front biased all wheel drive system which provides good grip in less than ideal conditions, such as snow. It'll handle the white stuff better than I can. Just make sure that the tires are rated for snowy conditions. But on dry roads, the SUV will easily understeer when pushed to the limits. The steering is light and firms up just enough on the move to not feel like as though it's not connected to the front wheels. But it's not a particularly fast and sharp steering like what you'd find in a BMW or Genesis GV70. This SUV feels more at home on commutes to and from work rather than a twisty mountain road. One of the biggest reasons why you would consider this Lincoln Nautilus to some other five passenger luxury SUVs is the ride comfort. Lincolns are known for providing a supple ride and this Nautilus is no different. The suspension does a fantastic job of absorbing the bumps in the road so that the shunts of driving over them don't get transferred into the cabin and into your seat. Optional on the Lincoln Nautilus and equipped on this particular demo vehicle are adaptive dampers. The ride is still pretty comfortable when the adaptive dampers are in sport mode, but the biggest difference between normal mode and sport mode is just how well the body gets controlled. So what I mean by that is when you hit a particularly big bump, in normal mode the suspension 
tends to oscillate a couple of times and make the body rock a little bit. But in sport mode, the body immediately gets settled. Another reason why you'd want to consider this Nautilus over other luxury SUVs is the quiet and serene cabin. There's very little road noise from the optional 21 inch tires. Wind noise on highways is non-existent. And the engine is pretty quiet as well when cruising on highways or city streets. Of course, if you push hard on a throttle pedal, the engine will be loud, but otherwise it won't bother you. As well, the auto start stop system is very smooth. So overall, this Nautilus is about as quiet as the Nautilus from 20,000 leagues under the sea. So not only is the cabin of the Lincoln Nautilus nice and quiet, but it also feels pretty luxurious and it's really straightforward to use. The main focus of your attention is going to be the 13.4 inch touchscreen, which is running on SYNC 4 infotainment and it does allow for wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. I haven't had any issues in connecting my Android phone with this system and it's pretty simple to use, especially if you're familiar with other Lincoln or Ford vehicles. The climate controls are on this floating center console and they all are physical buttons, which I really like. The only thing is, if you want to turn on or off the heated steering wheel, you have to do it through the infotainment system. It does not have a dedicated button. Not really a big deal, but just a minor inconvenience. On the center console, you also have your phone charging pad, the wireless phone charging pad, I should say, down here. Cup holders are right here, and they hold a small double-double just fine. The center console is pretty big, and it has this smaller area for like coins or change whatever you want to put in there and you also have a lot more smaller areas to store small items underneath it on the steering wheel there are quite a few buttons and it may look a little bit cluttered for some but they're really well arranged so on this side you have your radio controls as well as the cruise control and on this side you have all of the controls for the full digital driver display as for interior space the Nautilus sits on the same platform as the Ford Edge, so there's a lot of space up here in the front. Legroom, just fine. Headroom, not a problem. Although this seat is in its lowest position, but I still feel like I'm sitting pretty high up. So I have really good visibility out the front, out the side, and even out the back. Also, I briefly want to mention the seats. They are optional 22-way power seats, so they have tons of adjustments that you can fiddle around with to get your perfect position. And they are also massaging, so you have five or six different programs to choose from. So with that, let's go check out the space in the back. In the back of the Nautilus, it feels much more compact compared to the front, mainly due to the fact that I don't really have a whole lot of headroom for my six foot four height hair is right up against the headliner. But there is a lot of light thanks to the panoramic sunroof, so it doesn't feel quite as dark as in some other vehicles. As for leg space, behind my own driving position, my knees are touching up against the back of the front seat, but they don't feel squished, at least not as squished as my head feels. But you can recline these back seats for a little bit more comfort. However, again, not enough headroom. The outboards are heated and you also have a USB-A and USB-C port right here on the center console as well as a power outlet. And you also get a couple of air vents but you don't have a separate climate zone compared to the front. And the cup holders are right here in the, in the center armrest. So that's about it for the back seats of the Lincoln Nautilus. In the trunk, you'll find 1,055 liters of space behind the second row. Pushing the seat back buttons on the side of the trunk will allow for up to 1,948 liters of space. Be aware though, the rear seats don't fold completely flat. And they have a slight incline. This Lincoln Nautilus is a 2022 model year and the starting price was just under $60,000 Canadian. For 2023, it did receive a price hike just like every other new vehicle and now it starts at $60,500 Canadian. This one is equipped with pretty much every single option and package that's available so it costs around $78,000 Canadian. 
Now a similarly equipped BMW X3 or Mercedes-Benz GLC will be about $10,000 less than this one, but those are with the 2 liter engines. If you equip this one with the 2 liter engine and you omit the ultimate package which adds the 21 inch wheels and the premium audio system among a few other things, then the price of this would be pretty much identical to the German rivals. For the price, this Nautilus is very well equipped. It has features that one would expect from a luxury SUV which include heated and ventilated front seats, massaging front seats, heated rear seats, panoramic sunroof, surround view cameras, satellite navigation, a full digital driver display, and many more features. But it is missing some features, and others are not as good as they can be. For example, the surround view cameras are standard definition, not high definition. It does not have a head-up display, and it does not have a separate climate zone for the back seats. These are not major issues in my opinion, but at nearly $80,000 Canadian, you think that it would have certain features that less expensive SUVs have. On the safety side of things, the 2022 Lincoln Nautilus received a top safety pick award from the IIHS with the SUV receiving good scores in all crash tests and superior or advanced ratings for the driver aids. The only blemishes are the headlight performance and the child seat latch ease of use. And finally, the warranty is 4 years or 80,000 kilometers new vehicle and 6 years or 110,000 kilometers powertrain. In the US, these warranties are 4 years 50,000 miles and 6 years 70,000 miles respectively. So is the Lincoln Nautilus something you should consider over the German or Japanese or even Korean rivals? Well, if you want comfort first and foremost, then this should be at the top of your list because Lincolns do comfort really, really well. Driving wise, it's not as good as some of the other cars like the X3 or the Genesis GV70. Pricing is pretty similar to its competitors, so it doesn't really have too big of an advantage in that field. And unfortunately, I cannot comment on the reliability and the residual value of this car. But perhaps you can help me on that. If you own an older Lincoln Nautilus, how has the ownership been for you? Has it been really reliable or has it been a total lemon? Let me know in the comments. So over, as an overall package, there are better options out there, mainly the Genesis GV70. But again, if you care mostly just about comfort, then this is really good. And if you want to know more about this Lincoln Nautilus, I wrote a more detailed review of it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV like this one. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.